So now let's go ahead and look at one last question. Again, I'm asked to use the addition formula and I'm finding the probability of C or D. So according to this, I want the probability of C, which is an arrow, and only one of the shapes listed above is an arrow. I want to add the probability of D, which is a shaded piece, and I can see that three of the six pieces are shaded. Then I need to subtract off the probability of C and D, a shaded arrow. But wait a minute, the only arrow I have is not shaded, so zero of the arrows are shaded, and I get four sixths for 66.7%. So then we're asked, how is this problem different from the last two? Assuming you just watched the last previous video and you're watching them in order. But the difference here, there was no overlap. The last part of the probability of C and D at the same time equaled zero. So let's just go ahead now and summarize the formal definition for solving OR problems. Selecting one item, super important, it's only one, and we're looking for more than one attribute for that item. If the item that we're looking for of the criteria we want, if it's non-mutually exclusive, this means it does have overlap, that was kind of a weird word, non-mutually exclusive. It's like a double negative. But mutually exclusive is nothing in common. So if it's not nothing in common, there's some sort of commonality between the items. And the probability of A or B would be probability of A plus probability of B minus A and B at the same time. If there's overlap, they will have something in common, something that happens at the same time. But if we're finding the probability of mutually exclusive events, then there's going to be no overlap amongst the items we're selecting from. And the probability of A or B will be the probability of just A plus the probability of B. There's no overlap. And since there is no overlap, there is nothing to subtract. So now I want to look at probabilities using tables. Sometimes these are referred to as two-way tables because they have two categories that have some overlap. Um, let's go ahead and just start with the first problem. And keep in mind, this is not an OR problem that uses an addition rule. It's just to get used to working with a table. Question A asks, what is the probability of randomly picking a student who goes to a private school? Keep in mind, I'm just looking at one attribute. And if you look, here's all the private school students. But instead of having to total up all these categories, hopefully you can see that the totals are provided for me. So I just need to take my grand total. There are 88 private school students out of a total of 159 students. Whether you get that total from looking at what type of private or public they go to, or from looking at adding all the elementary, high school, and college students. Either way, it totals 159 students. So 88 of the 159 go to a private school, and that ends up being 55.3% of this population. So let's go ahead and do another problem. Now I'm asked to find the probability that somebody goes to a public high school. So again, I'm only looking for one attribute, but it's just a little bit more specific. So I come over to the public sector, but I'm only interested of all of those in somebody who goes to high school. They go to a public school that happens to be a high school, and only 19 people satisfy that criteria. So 19 of the 159, we're still counting the whole population, which would be 11.9% of these students fit that category. So now we're ready to get into the OR problems. We're still picking one student, but we want to see if they go to a public school or a high school. Now hopefully you can just see that these are not mutually exclusive because of all the public school students and all the high school students, hopefully you can see that 19 of them would be counted twice if we counted our categories separate. So that means for this OR problem, 
I'd add up the 71, whoops, wrong pen. I'd add up the 71 public school students with the 55 total high school students, but I'd need to subtract off those 19 public high school students that we already pointed out to get 107 students and with rounding that'll be 67.3 percent. So let me have you go ahead and try problem D. Okay, did you get 81.1 percent? So what should have happened is first you would have taken the 88 private school students, then you would have added to that the 66 elementary school students. Notice I'm not putting them over fractions right now because all the fractions will have the same denominator. So in the end, we'll just add or subtract the numerators and so we don't really need the denominator till the end. But because my, whoops, private, private, Oh, my pen's not working. My private school elementary students did have some overlap. I'm going to have to subtract that amount of overlap. To get a grand total of 129 students go to a private school, and if it's not private, then it's at least an elementary school for 81.1%. And lastly, sometimes to catch a mistake, Remember, probability cannot, oh my God, I'm out of control with the pens today. Sorry about that. Probability cannot exceed what? One or 100%. So hopefully that'll help you catch a mistake. You still could have a mistake and not be over 100%, but usually that's a good indicator.